all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Boxing World Weekly speaking with top-ranked photographer Mikey Williams. What was it like in the bubble? Yeah, well, photographing in the bubble was great. Because, um, not only did it give the chance to, for the fighters to fight, but um, like you said, it was very uh, intimate. There wasn't any other photographers allowed. So I think now that I think about it um, in the past like or in the future, um, you know, there's images that that top rank only has it's very exclusive you know so i think some of those photos that you see later down the road with people wearing masks and um you know just the whole production and how small the rings and no fans that, that stuff you know, in the future is going to look back and go wow that, that was different so um that was a pretty cool experience that we you know only top rank uh, was able to do during a pandemic but um you know like you said we got an opportunity for the fighters to fight make some money and i think everybody we did a great job as far as the production the espn top rank it was a blessing man for sure it's been a crazy year i just want to know like how you feeling how you doing you got back <laughs> you got back to you know the first love uh shooting boxing of course um yeah. so you've done every bubble event i assume yeah we did all the bubble events man it was uh it was incredible dude yeah, like i said we had a lot we had a good time in the bubble everything was you know, it was in the beginning, it took a little bit of getting used to, but once everybody had had the flow going, it was, man, it was like riding a bike. It was, everything was great, man. Top rank, there's the thing with top rank. And everybody that comes to a top rank event, you know, if they're Golden Boy, PVC, like anybody, uh, a first, pro, like a, you know, a guy making his pro debut, his team comes to a top rank event, they will tell you right away that this is different. This, from everything from the setup, the way everything is handled, checking in, your hotels, your you know your flights, your, uh, per diem. All, I mean, all that stuff goes into an event, not just you know the fight, but we care about people when, when they come into our event. You know, we take care of them. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, we treat everybody the same. So we take pride in knowing that hey, when these fighters on the top rank card, you guys will be taken care of, it and everything's gonna be. Everything will go smooth, man. And that's what it was during the pandemic. A lot of people that you know that I work with are passionate about what they do. Every single one of us, man. Um, so um, it was a great experience. We, we kept the ball rolling for sports. You know, boxing on TV was was great. We had some really, really great fights. I mean, a couple undisputed fights, I think, in there. Um, so overall, wow, it was it was an amazing experience, man. But I'm so glad we're out of it because yeah. the fans, the fans, you know, they missed out on a couple of good fights, man. A couple? Like, a lot? A few. Like, yeah, yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to name to name a couple from the Cepeda fight, oh, my God, incredible. Can you imagine how many people would be on their feet during that fight? Yeah. You got, <laughs> and I you couldn't got... believe when I was watching ringside. I'm like, oh, my God, this is going crazy. Yeah, Mikey's just there as the only person like screaming. He's like, "Oh my god!" Oh my god! What am I doing? Like, yeah, I better not miss this, right? <laughs> yeah, and like, that's where I was great. going with that. It's like you have a lot to choose from with bubble events. So I want to know what was your favorite one. I guess, dude, that's a better one. Was was nuts. Um, and there was so many good ones. They, they all meant something different. Like, yeah. you know, the, like like I told you, like the ESPN and the top ranked production group. Um, we have an event, you know, we try to, we, we try and I think we do make, make some great, great fights, but as far as like, um, the production side of it, you know, a lot goes into that, whether it be the screens and my photos going up on the billboards or, um, you know, the, the introduction when you're watching ESPN, the whole production part of it, uh, I think it was great. Like the Lomachenko, the, they did the, uh, you know, the heartbeat. And then the, the lightning stuff for the for the uh, for Crawford, that stuff was in the fire. It's like, dude, we're in a bubble inside MGM Grand, and we had fire going off, and you know, it's, it was a pretty cool experience, man. To be honest with you, so to name one or two, man, that's a beta fight was incredible. I think it got fight of the year, didn't it? Yeah, or it, it was getting nominated for. Yeah, I think it, it got did it. Get it. It got it. I know it. the yeah. BWA awards. I know they pushed off some of the BWAA. Um, 
awards, I think, for writers or photographers, but I, maybe that fight did uh, end, rightfully so. That was an incredible fight, man. Cepeda, incredible. And I just want to know, like, where did it all start for you? Do you remember the first boxing event you shot? Yeah, I remember, of course, dude. When I got out of the military, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, right? And um, I was like, well, I got to go back to school. The military was going to pay for me to go back to school and find something I like to do. And here's some money for you to, you know, to live somewhere and find what you want to do as far as like uh, your career goes. Because that's the, you earn, when you join the military, you earn, uh, one of the best things you do earn is going back to school and that pay for it, right? The other one is home, home buy, um, which I did a couple of years ago. But that's what helped me find photography is going, being able to use that GI Bill go back to school, take a couple classes and find a photojournalism class, which which uh, which I took. And they gave me a camera and they said, hey, man, go out go out to the to the sports teams and cover cover them playing. And I was like, dude, I've played baseball in my life. So I was like, man, this is this is cool. Can't wait. I didn't really when I was into photography, but I really didn't know about covering it as far as like working, working wise. So um, I just kind of just grabbed the camera and went to the team. I went and sat right on the bench, dude. <laughs> that's fun. Now that I'm thinking about it, like, it's pretty crazy just to go and just think that that's what you need to do. But that's what I did. I was I needed to be a part of the team, right? Give somebody else a camera. Maybe he's in left field and he's in the stands or he's taking pictures from wherever. But I knew that I needed to be close to with the players and earn their respect and show them that this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm, you know, this is my job, basically. And so I, I learned a lot of, uh, um, I already knew the game of baseball, so that was really easy taking pictures. But when I when I did that and I brought it back to the teacher, he said, Mikey, man, these are, these are like really good. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'll do it again. Like, can I go through football? Kind of. So he would send me to have to cover football, but baseball was really my, my niche. I really wanted to do baseball. Like, I really loved it. And so um, time went on, I covered some more games. And uh, my teacher really said, like, like you, you can, like, there's, there's a profession that you can seek that this is what they do. And I'm like, really? That you can get paid to do something like that? So he's like, really, dude, you should really think about, like, doing this full time. So I took it really serious, like, you know, I'd sleep and think photography. I'd be in the shower thinking photography. I'd dream photography. I'd go online and I'd learn just, like, lighting and, I mean, everything. I watched every single video on YouTube. <laughs> so I say like to people that could want to learn, go on YouTube, check out some videos, practice, go out, shoot, you learn something and then go out and shoot it again. So that's basically what I did. And um, I caught the, the eye of um, uh, the Dodgers. The Dodgers started looking at, looking at me, right? Because I would get credentials to go to the Dodgers. And then uh, Brandon Rios, he was a fighter for the top rank at the time. And he was looking for a... Uh, looking for a personal photographer so he asked me he said hey you, you ever shot boxing i said man no nah, i don't know really i don't know anything about boxing but but my i watched mike tyson back in the day when my dad you know had had friends over but other than that but i'm willing to learn you know i love photography so um i went to his uh gym and he really loved my work and from then it was just like following him around and shooting shooting uh boxing and um, you know, when he was at the, like I said, he was at Top Rank at the time, and Top Rank was building a social media team, and they asked me pretty much like, "Can you do that for us?" And we to, you know, it just kind of rolled into you know, that's how it opened the door for me. So, um, yeah, that's how it kind of all started. That is yeah. insane. Like, kind of fell into your lap in a way. Like, you obviously put in the work and you had to go do it, but like everything kind of just like worked out for you. Like you were just in the right spot at the right time. Like obviously getting noticed by the Dodgers, like that's just crazy how that worked out for you. And like, so once the yeah. fans did come back, like after you became, you know, what you were today and it got through the pandemic and stuff like that, I want to know like, what did you think the pandemic did for you? Just the experience. I really think like, let's see, you know, teamwork is a big thing. That's one thing that I really, promote is like we have a great team in our in our office right um at top rank like i said um when you're together spending time together you push each other to be better and i think that's important whenever whatever, whatever um, you know um, you're doing as far as work so that that team effort is definitely important and i think what the pandemic did was it brought us a lot closer as a team 
to be able to shoot us into this 2021 year. And from the looks of it, man, we've got nothing but fights coming on the horizon. So uh, we're looking, we're really looking forward to it. Man. Was there any cool stories you had in the in the bubble that like you wouldn't have experienced if there was fans there? Yeah, my memory is terrible. To be honest with you, like the you can ask some of my colleagues here and like you know ask them about a fight or whatever and, and a lot of times it's like what fight was that or you know it's it was it was just all one fight yeah you said that it all kind of you know blends into one fight and like that makes sense i mean i couldn't imagine it being just one one photographer at all these fights so like is it almost good to kick back and relax sometimes and like get to sit down and watch like a pacquiao versus ugas I try. I, I really do, man. I'm a boxing head and I love it. I fell in love with the sport from the very first fight I walked. Like you asked me earlier, do you remember your first fight? And I, of course I do, man. I was ringside for, for um, Timothy Bradley versus Provotnikov. And um, it was incredible. It was it was amazing. But the first fight I actually shot was Crawford versus, uh, uh, What was his name? It was on the it was on the uh, Rios Alvarado two. Uh, it was like the second fight, the undercard at Mandalay Bay. When, when wow. Crawford fought Prescott, Redis Prescott. That was the first fight I photographed. Which is funny now because like dude, shooting Crawford's like crap. I love Crawford not only for he's as a fighter, but he's a heck of a cool dude to hang out with. We're both competitive. I always think I'm better than him and stuff, and he thinks he's better than his stuff. And a lot of times he gets me, but. I still let him know that, you know, I could still kick your yeah, ass. Yeah, 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 I, I could compete, <laughs> yeah. That was one thing you guys did talk about last time, is actually your relationship with Crawford, which was pretty cool. So we'll get yeah. into some other relationships you've had. And, like, some some fighters that I'm interested in was Xander Zayas. I want to know what's your Xander. relationship. Oh, is he the Xander. most exciting prospect in, in, in boxing? Yeah, there's so many of them. Top rank is, dude, are, are like, uh, uh, matchmakers and people who sign these guys, they're the best in the business. That's why you... Top rank has been around forever, dude. It's yeah. because of these matchmakers, man. They, they scout guys and they know who, who to grab and who looks, you know, who's going to be good down the road. I mean, it's no, like I said, Top Rank's been around for many, many years with Bob Aaron. But he's got a team that's in place. Like I said, bro, the best is the best. And when you have that, the company's not going to go anywhere. And you're talking prospects. It's like the Dodgers, dude. You know, the Dodgers farm system is like one of the best in, in MLB, right? It's the same thing with Top Rank. If they bring rookie after rookie after rookie of the year, rookie of the year, rookie of the year, rookie of the year <laughs> right? In my line, yeah, you're right. the same thing. They're bringing prospects. Gabriel Flores Jr. is coming out. You know, um, uh, Edgar Berlanga, Teofimo Lopez before that. Now we have Sandra Zayas. And I mean, that's just to name a few, but dude, these guys are hungry. They want to win world champions, right? <laughs> they want to be champs right now, you know what I mean? You better have to pull them back, but dude, Xander's a great kid. Um, and he's really humble. We love him. We love him. You know, all of our guys, you know, whether or not they're prospects or not, dude, top right, we, we're a big family, man. We want nothing but the best for these guys, you know? I mean, not many pro debuts go the way that this weekend's went with Nico yeah, Alley Walsh. Do that. Well, how was that? Like, what was an experience like? Like, just being around someone, you know, with that aura? Man, it was special, man. You couldn't have wrote that night any better, I think. Um, we were working out with them prior to him going out, you know, and meeting him the first time and said, this guy's, this kid's incredible, dude. He really is. He's got a great head on his shoulders. But I was like, hey, hopefully he can fight, you know? <laughs> like, we don't want to see anything else. And man, he showed up and he showed out that night, didn't he? And what's incredible was, you know, we're backstage behind and I'm shooting photos and like, man, it didn't really dawn on me. Ever. Like, I didn't say, you know, these are, this is Nico, and I got to take these because the, I didn't really think of that in my head. I just, it really didn't click until I was backstage behind the locker room, and I found out about those trunks. When you have, when you're wearing Muhammad Ali's trunks, I was like, oh, sh like, those are, those, are you serious? And so I got word, word was going around, and I was like, oh, man, like, we got to get that photo. Like, are they really real? Like, are, this is, this is, going, this is happening. Like, wow, you know? So I made sure I got that stuff, and if you zoom in on the on those trunks, it says it, they're made for Muhammad Ali, man. That's incredible. And Joe Tess, our ESPN analyst, he said, uh, I don't know if you remember this on the broadcast, but I heard um, what he said afterwards was, that's like a major league uh, prospect, you know, wearing Babe Ruth's uniform, making his 
making his uh, pro debut or, you know, like a, his first at bat wearing Babe Ruth's uniform. Yeah. And that's a very great comparison. I mean, how it's perfect. Like, to wear your grandfather's Muhammad Ali strength, the greatest of all time, in your first pro debut fight. Incredible. He just came in the other day, too, and we were talking about it. He goes, yeah, I'm putting those trunks up. Yeah. Those we'll never see another day. No. Those, those no. are it. That's it. <laughs> that so the story, the story keeps getting better and better as, as Nico com, comes along. Now he's getting back in school. Like I said, the, the kid is incredible. It's going to be a fun, fun time following his journey. I know the top-ranked team is really excited to, to cover him. He's going to go into his next fight. We heard, we heard, we heard some stuff that... It's gonna. Uh, he's gonna be fighting in some big venues coming up. So he don't feel the pressure, but man, I'm pulling for him, man. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons, obviously, to having that uh, to having that last name as in, as not being Muhammad Ali. And uh, but the pro is that he gets to it gets to go through all these you know uh, media members and goes through this big stage and fight in all these big venues that like these prospects might never see the light of day. Uh, yeah. But talk about wow moments you were talking about, Taylor Ramirez. Incredible. Was that his wow moment for you being there live? How was it for you? Both fighters, I mean, Josh Taylor now, shoots. We were just talking the other day about who he could fight and what's next for him. And even, you know, Jose Ramirez, the dude is tough, man. These guys, our 140 pound weight class is, man, it's incredible. Like, you can match up any of these guys. These guys up and coming, Arnold Barboza, Josh yeah. Taylor. But the, as far as the event, we, we had some fans back, so. You know, it, it was pretty, it was loud in there, man. It was really loud. And that venue was really nice, too. It was the Virgin Hotels mm -hmm. um, here in Las Vegas. So, um, yeah, it was pretty loud. Um, you know, it was a great fight. Undis for undisputed. So, I mean, I thought it went pretty pretty well. And Josh, who, we'll, we'll see what he's going to do next. But, but man, the 140-pound division is, is crazy, though. And yet if you, like that was another undisputed fight. Top rank has put on close to if they would have been Fury and uh, Joshua, he's got the other belts, right? Yeah. That would have been for the undisputed. They would have done five undisputed fights in like the last four years, man. Isn't that a crazy like stat? Think of it because you had the Tia Fimo, you had the Ramirez, you would have had the the heavyweight uh, undisputed, then you had Bud Crawford fighting for you know his undisputed a few years ago. Like, these are just recent fights, man. Yeah. So if anybody talks about top rank, they can... <laughs> <laughs> Go talk to Mikey. Come on, I'm not just saying that because I worry, but come on, dude. Like, Nico Ali, what do you think he would have... He came to top rank for a reason, man. Yeah, I don't, ima I don't imagine it's going anywhere. But another wow moment I wanted to talk about, and I think, in my books, it's KO of the year. Valdez Burchell. Is that KO of the year for you? Who would have known? Like, man, I knew that was going to be a great fight. To be honest and i was like prior to the week i'm not lying like you know oscar is one of my dudes dude and i've you know since he was we were fighting in small venues and when the chelts name came up i was like oh man that's like everybody's like oh i can't wait to see i'm like man i don't know about this fight bro this is a good fight but oh man but you know what as the weeks went on and we went into that fight week Everybody was kind of like, dude, Oscar's going to do something special here, man. And we felt it, man, going in. Not a knock, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't expect, we expected a freaking knockout. But he was, you know, you, you felt that as the week was going in and you know, something special was going to happen. And when that freaking, when that punch landed, that left hook over the top of the head, I was like, whoa. And I had to stay composed for a minute, you know. The dude felt pretty much on top of me. And I'm like, I couldn't obviously get the punch because I had the back, his back, Burchell's back, but okay. or, uh, Alvarez's back. But when he got when he he got punched, he came forward, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to nail this, you know. And something like that happens. It's like you think for a second, and you're just like, you go off of instinct. I don't even know if there's really any thinking. You just kind of have to react. But we got a, a couple pretty cool photos from that moment, that that night for Oscar and his family and for the fans. Um, that'll live forever man like when he was jumping over i don't know if you remember that photo but we have we got one with uh, oscar jumping over uh um Burchell celebrating in the ring yeah he's screaming oh it's good stuff dude i yeah, said no, oh, I, better was... not, I better not miss this one no we've uh <laughs> we've featured that photo in our shows plenty of times um yeah 
Do you yeah. think it was? Do you think it's in due part to you know training with Eddie Reynoso's team? Like it seems like that team when they go to Eddie just comes unbeatable. Hey, Canelo's a Canelo's a beast, man. Um, you know, I really, to be honest with you, like uh, uh, Manuel Robles, he was a real cool dude. I, I really love Manuel. He's a big Dodger fan too, by the way. <laughs> but they had a great combination too when they worked together, him and, uh, and Valdez. I mean, you could always, you don't, you never know what would happen if he stayed or, you know, if they still remain the same but hurt together. But you definitely see it in Austin, and he's, he's definitely, uh, he's, he just keeps winning, bro. And he keeps, he, dude is special, you know? Yeah. Oscar's a warrior, dude. I mean, he's been through some wars and he never disappoints. He leaves there. <laughs> he's incredible, man. That is, super, I think he's like the definition of a Mexican man. warrior. Oscar Valdez. Yeah, yeah, man. And you know, we know what else I like about Oscar. It's not just his fighting, but he's a good person. And he's very humble and he's very appreciative. You know, him and Bob Aaron have a great relationship. You know, the top rank, he's, he's always thanking him. And, you know, it's a pleasure to be around Oscar, man. He's truly a class act. and. He's my bro. Yeah, I think him. I've never seen you more in a pre-fight in it, like pre-fight video on Top Rank than I did when Inoue fought Desimeris. What is it like being around Inoue? Oh, you're talking about for the uh, during the photo shoots and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we just recently started shooting all the fighters because we've uh, been doing posters and stuff for the for the uh, the big the bigger fights. But um, that's been that's been fun. I've always enjoyed watching uh, taking to the studio. But one thing that, that I get to do when I'm doing studio is you, you get the one-on-one -on -one interaction with, with them alone in the studio with their team. So you get to see who they are, you know what I mean? And I always loved that part in boxing versus like when I worked for the Dodgers. It was great working for the Dodgers and stuff, shooting baseball, but one thing that was missing was being able to interact with, with the fighters. And I get that interaction when I'm doing studio with, you know, talking crap about, I mean, whatever. We just, we just, you know, vibe off each other, and, you know, have a lot of fun. So you get to see, you get to see their personality uh, a lot better in, when, it, when we're doing that studio work. But for Inoue, you know, he's, his language barrier is still a little, you know, it was a little difficult. So I had to go through another, uh, Nobu is his uh, translator. Yeah. So it's just a little, it's a little different. He, you know, Inoue loves photography too. Yeah, he looks. He seems like he likes it. No, he loves photography. Yeah, so he does photographs himself. Oh, he does himself. Yeah, he does. He he shoots. So when he sees, you know, look, look, he's always looking over at the photos, you know, making sure they're okay. So <laughs> like, well, okay. He's like, you know, he's smiling. So yeah, everybody's having a good time when we're doing those uh, studio shows. Anyways, like, man, a lot of people have him pound pound for pound, and rightfully so. The dude is incredible for that weight class, knocking everybody out like that crazy and his his future right now we're trying to get another undisputed fight i mean talking about undisputed we might have five or six in the last five years man this keeps this keeps up yeah uh you brought up pound for pound are you willing to uh give me your pound for pound or uh i do Cro i'm crawford though Team, ain't nobody like Lee Samuels said ain't nobody beating terrence crawford at 147 i don't care you can put them all in the same same ring at once you can Manny Pacquiao fight one to two rounds. Errol Spence three and four. Thurman, all of them. He'll take them all out, Bob. Yeah, no, ride with I your guy. It. I like it. I like it. Now, what's I your uh, what's your photo of the year for you? Last year was, I think, my as far as like action you're talking about. Like what photo you know grabs your attention the most? Like you go, you look at it and you go, wow, that was a good one. Yeah, those don't come up too often. <laughs> I don't, if there's ever a thing that's a perfect photo, I don't know that it exists. There's always something that can always be better about it. And I've always been like that, you know what I'm saying? Or, and I'll always be like that. Because what other stuff can can push you to, to keep going and make that perfect photo, you know? Because very that's what I want to like, know from you right now is you're already, you know, done so many cool events in your career, already well accomplished in photography. What, what are some goals you still have left to accomplish? Well, I really haven't thought about, like, goals, man, you know? Um, top rank, we, we stay pretty busy and we're always grinding and do the best work we can. I haven't really sat down and said, okay, this is my goal for next year, or five years from now, you know. Uh, if we look back, dude, two years have went by like that, like, yeah. you know. So I don't know if I sat down and like said, okay, Mike, let's set some goals. Maybe I should. 
um, in my personal life, I think I do more than I do uh, uh, my photography, I think. Um, just be here for my team every week as best I can, stay healthy, be around and, and do the best work that I can. I think now, you know, maybe five, 10, 15 years from now, maybe we'll, you know, be, my name will be recognized, you know, with Lee Samuels and some of these guys in the Hall of Fame. But for now, just taking event by event, I think, and doing the best work I can in the moment. And I think that's where I, that's, that's where I allow my best work, man, is just being there and doing my best, bro. Yeah, goals. for an answer you didn't know the answer to, I thought that that was very well said. And, yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, to finish things off, I gotta, I gotta talk baseball because you know that's, that's, that's my love. And uh, yeah. World Series, Dodgers winning the World Series. Am I not yeah. right in saying that you still cover them? No, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't know more. But John Sulu, uh was a great, he was a great person. He, he, you know, he, he took me under his wing when I was there at the Dodgers, and I've covered a few World Series for him. But they have a great team right there in the Dodgers, and you know, who knows? Maybe they might if they go back. I'm sure they will. I mean, they're gonna win. What am I talking about? I'll hit them up and then ask them, "Hey, man, can I come in and cover the game for the World Series game or two?" We'll okay. So where where does the where does the priority lie? Game Seven World Series at wow. Dodger Stadium Dude, or or Fury Wilder Jesus. Trilogy? <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful. I, of course, I'd be here for my boxing family, bro. Of course, of yeah. course. Of course. But it, man, that would be incredible to cover against the, I mean, with the Dodgers again. That because the last game I did was with uh, the, against the Houston Astros, bro. <laughs> I think I'd be wearing a ring right now if it wasn't for the Astros. <laughs> hey, you got you got your World Series ring though. You got it last year. You'll probably you might you might get it again this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see. You know, last year when they won it, the guys that I worked with, you know, the people that you know worked for the uh, the staff there. Yeah. They actually have World Series rings on their fingers, bro. Incredible. Incredible. It's great to see. Baseball's, baseball's awesome. And boxing's back, man. I really enjoy it. Looking forward to the rest of the year. We're going to finish strong here at Top Rank. And some more good fights on the horizon, man. So, guys, stay tuned. Um, thanks for having me. It was fun.